Game number two of the home series between Boston University and Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish took the first game of the two games set here and the final weekend of the hockey's regular season. Notre Dame winners three to one and the story was the junior goalie Cal Peterson for Notre Dame finished with 37 saves and saved all 23 of BU's shots in that final period. And we are just about ready for the start of tonight's game. We mentioned in the pregame show, a little bit of a lineup change up top. JFK will be skating on the second line alongside Greenway and Roberto, and they will start things off against the top line of Evans, Morrison, and Bjork for Notre Dame. McAvoy and the senior Doyle Summerby, who is honored tonight as one of the three seniors in the senior class out there, and he goes back behind Ottinger. And now Greenway down low, dangerous pass to JFK to start a breakout. And Anders Bjork jumps on it behind the net. Bjork swivels onto his backhand. McAvoy shadowing him, and Roberto punches it out to center. Yeah, Greenway yeah. aggressive here to come out, try and cut it off. And now a great stretch pass up ahead. Over the line, Bjork in the middle, and Roberto with the interception. They go across with space. Here comes Dello. He shoots, and it's blocked off JFK. Another fire goes to the far corner. And now it's brought down and settled by Gilbert, who gets it to the net front, but McAvoy stands it up. Bjork with the turnover, sauces it to the middle, his shot and a glove snare by Ottinger, and a lot of action from Notre Dame in the first 45 seconds. And Doyle Summerby, one of the, one of the three Terrier seniors on the ice, getting into it right now, looks like with Cam Morrison, but you know what a flurry of play by Notre Dame, they were just firing pucks on net, and Jake Ottinger just makes it look like a can of corn on that save, but I mean, you know, any, any other goalie in the, in the NCAA, that's a tough save to make, but... He stands tall in there and whips his glove hand at the puck. Already a few shots on that by Notre Dame. Second line now out there for Notre Dame and Jenkins loses the draw. Chad Chris pivots behind his own net and now goes to Clayton Keller on the left side. BU moving from right to left here in the first period. They're listening to Boston University Student Radio. And Carpenter now in the far right corner, he loses it. And now out to center is Cal Burke. Burke ahead to Ogilvy and Ogilvy dumps and chases. Chad Chris the first there in the left corner. He touches it to McLeod. Those two playing together for the first time this year last night. Good pass from Carpenter. Now Harper over the line. He cuts it in the middle. Now has some space and a great save by Peterson. Harper went from right to left there through into the middle of the hash marks. And it's cleared out to center and Diffley wrists one in and Peterson out to play. Well that line is just electric. You can see the two wings. They just feed off of each other with Bobo in the middle. And you see the tape to tape passing. Everybody knows where everyone's going to be, and there's just so much speed. Puck is sauced ahead, now settles in between the two circles, but Brian Diffley gets it away as Ostley was there. Here comes Ryan Clunan with speed through the middle, and Phelps picks that puck up and now goes deep. Phelps, Bellow, and Clunan. A new third line formed last weekend. They all had two points a week ago in the eight goal outburst in Durham, New Hampshire. And last night slotted together as well. Diffley at the top of the left point. His shot is blocked down. And here comes Osley. And now gets it over to Dawson Cook who flips it in. And Notre Dame changes all five skaters. Diffley, aggressive pass up to Phelps and it works out. Phelps now goes in one on four and loses the puck. Bo Brower on the back check. And now Brower taps it ahead to Malquist. Malmquist. fights with Summerby. And a nice play by Summerby. He gets it to McAvoy. Curry across to Shabbat. Shabbat over the blue line and a good step to keep him there by Luke Ripley. And McAvoy touches it off the stick of Shabbat and the fourth line's in deep. Puck in the left corner, now goes behind the net and now across to the far wing. And Joe Wegworth, who was a healthy scratch last night for the Irish, is the only change in the lineup and he loses it. Shabbat now jumps on the puck. And Tommy Kelly, one of the three seniors on this BU team that was honored before the game, Joins in on the five-man scrum. Curry with it, goes to the net front, and the bouncing puck goes out to the side. Now Summerby at the point. His shot goes into the pants of Curry. Summerby once again. Now to Curry in the slot, and it's blocked off to the left. Summerby pinches down low, swivels to his backhand, and now sauces it back across the grain to Shabbat. Kelly, top of the left, and it goes for the easy pass down low to Curry. Curry operating with his back to the goal, and a nice shift here for the fourth line. And as I say that, it's a turnover, and Bo Brower will get it to Wegworth, and Wegworth tries to get it in deep, but it goes into the stand, so we'll have a neutral zone face-off in front of the Notre Dame bench. 16-32, left here in the first. Yeah, what a, what a shift there by the fourth line, and you know what? I think Doyle Summerby was really uh, the main player on that on that shift. You know, he, he you can tell that he's got something 
you know, a chip on his shoulder. It's his last game here in the regular season at the Gannis Arena as a senior. He was honored before the game, and, you know, he's playing pretty well so far. He had a few chances right there. Face off one by BU McLeod to Chris. Puck almost got in, hit a skate, and here the other way comes Ogilvy. Roberto on the back check, he slides it across. And the spinorama shot from Cal Burke. Rests down in the far left corner, now top of the left point. Across to Della with the right. His blast goes wide. Yeah, Chris almost deflected that towards the net. Yeah, he was just he trying to lucky there. clear the puck, and it almost went in on the backside. Now a shot, and a great glove save by Ottinger. Yeah, dangerous there. So it looked like a, a VU player was trying to clear it into the zone, and it hit Jordan Greenway, bounced right out to center ice. And, uh, you know, Cal Burke receiving the pass at the faceoff dot and not really doing much with it. Like you said, the spinorama shot, but maybe too much on that play for him. Good blast. To... Yeah, good blast there from Gilbert as well. Yep. Notre Dame is so quick with their, their D-men just shoot the puck really at will. Was very impressed with their ability to do that last night. Does your perception of the team overall change with how they fared this weekend? Yeah, I went from thinking we went from thinking a couple of weeks ago that this team really doesn't have any chance to get out of their region to by the end of Saturday night realizing they were one bounce of the puck away from going to the Frozen Four and they if they had played like they did that weekend had a legit shot at a national championship. I don't think it was there one point during the year when we thought that this team had a legit shot at winning the national title? Yes, during their eight game win streak. I was I know you weren't, but I was I was starting to I was starting to really buy in that this team had a had a legit chance to win the national championship. Really when they were when they were beating Maine three to one? Yeah, I did, Jarrett, because I just I I thought that this team was just gonna keep improving and improving and improving. I yeah. did not see that lull coming. And then they lost to Merrimack. Yeah, but to me it wasn't even those Merrimack losses. It, it was after that, where they just weren't playing they just they would get out to slow starts, and there were just bad periods and bad penalties, and it just seemed like they, they that upward rise they had, because it wasn't just beating the mains. I mean, they, they beat BC twice in that span. I mean, they were good. They really, they had they had that good little streak. Yeah. Um, and, you know, losing at Lowell, I didn't hate. They didn't have a good game in the bean pot, but again, they're losing to good teams. Mm -hmm. And it just towards the end of the stretch... Of this season, I just you just were getting this sense where they were just so inconsistent. Yeah, and the inconsistency is what plagued and really dumbed down these expectations going into the end of the year. However, you have such high expectations for this team because of all the talent they have. I think overall it was still it was still a good season because at the end of Saturday night, it was hard not to just think, "Oh wow, they," as you said. You're, you're one goal, you're one bounce away from going to the Frozen Four. When you get to the Frozen Four, I don't care what expectations were going into the season. To me, it's a, it's a successful year if you get yeah. to the Frozen Four. So I, I, don't, I don't really, you know, if you describe everything of what they had this year, I know they didn't win Hockey East Tournament, I know they didn't win the Beanpot, but they finished tied for a regular season share of Hockey East title, and they were... You know, they made it to overtime in the, in the regional final in what was not a friendly draw. No. You know, I I I think this this season it, it wasn't enough below or enough above expectations to start the season for me to really You know, I, I think no. it, I think it was right around what we expected. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think earlier in the year and I think you agreed with me on this point uh we looked at it midway through the, or even later in the season, and said, "Do they really have a good win this year? Like in the regular season, what good wins did they have? When you, at obviously at BC because we can it's look always... we can look back on it and say earlier in the year they beat Michigan, but Michigan turned out to be terrible. At BC because at BC is always a good win. Okay, that's a good um, win. I would I would say." And I know it's totally like taken aback because you lose to them in the bean pot, but beating Harvard at home yeah. is a good win. Um, now, yeah, they don't, they don't, and I, I think the well, I, the win against Lowell was a good win at home, and the win against Notre Dame at home was a good win. Okay, where was the season-defining win? There wasn't one, and, and I think it's hard for a team with BU's expectations to have a season-defining win. 
unless you win the Beanpot Tournament, where's your opportunity to have a def defining season win? Now, my answer to that would be on the road, which they didn't do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's no team because you're favored to win every game you play in. One free throw attempt for Lafroy, and he completes it. So a four-point play gives Lehigh an 11-point lead with 7.50 left. Foreman into the front court. It's being tightly guarded by Ross and now kicks to Fanning. He's got all uh, LaFleur, Lafroy on him. And now we're going to get a foul. And Lehigh wanted a turnover. The ball went out of bounds, but it'll be a reach-in. So that will go against Matt Holba. And now Fanning to the line for a one and one. From here on out, the Terriers will be at the foul stripe in this first half. And that means, like you said, play more aggressive because if you get the foul call, you'll be at the line. And when the, shot, the shots aren't falling, the line might be where, where you need to get those points. Fanning makes the first. And now six points on the afternoon. Eric Fanning is getting to that charity stripe. So dangerous for this BU team and also converts at a high percentage. And now Fanning makes the second. So two of two from the line for Eric Fanning. Now can you string together some stops here? We saw Lehigh go a little cold for a stretch there. And now you need to clamp down defensively, get some stops and climb back into this game. Alston to the basket, Fanning on him and he gets a partial block. And now Mahoney has it and here comes Fanning. A huge play from Eric Fanning and now Foreman Tries to rush things and gets it inside. Now kicks to Scanlon. He's wide open for three. Got it. That's a big shot for Tyler Scanlon. Very big shot. And finally, the Terriers get one of those open threes to fall. We hope it doesn't lead to them. Keep taking them if they're not falling. But a good sign there for Tyler Scanlon. Pick and roll with Ross. He takes a highly contested three. And off the back rim, and Fanning gets it. So BU gaining a little bit of momentum. They're down just six. Fanning has it up top. Lafroy guarding him, and now Foreman on the right side. BU moving left to right here in this first half. They're down by six, 6.42 left in the first. Semifinals here in the Patriot League Tournament. 10 to shoot for Foreman on the far side. Down low to the freshman Mahoney. He faces up, now backs down with five. Goes to his right and gets the floater to fall. Great move from Max Mahoney. He saw the mismatch on Holba and used the size in his body Spun to his right and went up at that beautiful right-handed hook shot in the paint. BU's bench is getting into it. Here comes Lafroy. Alston on him. The shot from Holba from the top. And that goes in and out. Ball is loose. Scanlon with the rebound. And BU stringing together a couple good possessions on both ends of the floor. Fanning uses the screen from Scanlon. As Lafroy on his hip had Mahoney on a pass and it's deflected out of bounds. And a quick 7-0 run for the Terriers means Tim Kempton is coming back into the game and now Lehi is going to call a timeout as they're sensing the momentum shifting towards the Terriers. Kempton just does so much for this team, Matt. It's unbelievable. His ability to be just a threat offensively is pretty clear. He's now <laughs> averaged 20 points per game in his last three seasons. And it's not a coincidence that right when he comes out of the game, the Terriers make a run and cut into this lead, but they needed that right there. They took advantage of Kempton being off the floor, and they forced those other guys to make the shots. We saw Holbaugh on the last possession take a three, and he's not one of their, you know, he's probably their, their eighth guy. And when you have him taking threes, you're going to live with that. If he makes them, so be it. But don't let the big guys beat you. That's what BU's doing right now. We saw Fanny with a nice block as well. The Terriers starting to get more active on the defensive end, closing out on the shooters, cog in the lane, and not forcing easy lanes. But... On offense, the ball movement leads to the open shots. And finally, one of those open three-pointers finds the bottom of the net. They go inbounds pass to Fanning. 20 to shoot. A touchdown low for Mahoney. Kempton on him. Goes to his right and misses at righty hook. Had a nice move to get Kempton away from the rim, however. A three from Cohen in the corner, and he misses it. And Fanning with the rebound. Jordan Cohen was wide open right in front of us, and now fanning up the other way goes to Johnson. Johnson uses the screen with Scanlon. And now they slow it up. 17 to shoot. Scanlon comes again for a screen, slips it. Foreman can't get it to him. Foreman now to his left, and it's a block. Two Mountain Hawks there with the rejection. Lafroy and, of course, Tim Kempton. I think that's Kempton's the ball third with blocker right now. Yeah, Kempton has been very good down low defensively, just a really solid rim protector. 
And we saw Nana Fallon when Bucknell played BU. Just he had seven blocks in that game. Every time BU drove the lane, he'd swat it into another stratosphere. And that's what Kempton's doing right now, forcing BU to, to not make anything easier on the basket. Seven to shoot, Foreman off the screen. They run him through two. He picks up his dribble, just three to shoot, fade away from the elbow. Not a good look. And it's grabbed by Lehigh. They push with Ross. Ross now pulls up, goes across. They kick it one extra time. The three from the corner from Price. He gets it. Price has been absolutely terrific this season, shooting from distance. Over 73s on the season, shooting over 42%. And the extra pass, but once again, Price was just wide open. The Terriers weren't able to get back in their zone defense and set it. And Lehigh took advantage, pushing the ball again, the open look. Scanlon with an answer. Yes, Tyler Scanlon. Two threes in the last few minutes for BU and the lead back to four. And in his freshman season, Scanlon has shown that he can be one of the best spot-up shooters on this team. And two in a row for the Virginia Native. Alston, a little floater in the lane. And that goes for Lehigh. Brendan Alston, the junior guard for Lehigh, and Justin Alston, the senior forward for BU. And now Johnson uses the screen from Justin Alston. And Fanning gets it in to Alston for BU, skips it across to Scanlon. He fakes the three, now goes in, and tries to use the glass on the six-footer and can't get it to fall. And Lafroy up the far side, now kicks it to the corner. Ross handles it, barely keeps it in. And now Ross will slow things up. 3.55 left, 16 to shoot, a six-point lead for the Mountain Hawks. Alston stops his dribble, now Ross. And it's on the far side, baseline, Kempton. Nice interior pass, and it's a jumper that goes in and out from Ross. And here comes Johnson to push the other way. Johnson slows it up on the left side. Alston catching up in the play, uses the screen from Alston. Elbow jumper from Johnson. In and out, tip in from Alston, can't fall. Loose rebound, and here comes Lafroy and Lehigh. They get it ahead, and it's an easy dunk for Austin Price the other way. And just a leak out there from Austin Price. Nothing you can do if you're BU. I mean, he was just ahead of the pack and was able to finish the easy laying. Foreman with a good move on Kempton. He had the layup, but kicked it out to Fanning instead. Let's go Terriers, the chant from the student section. They're on the first weekend of spring break, so not that many students here in attendance, Foreman now uses the dribble drive, gets to the basket and gets the runner to go. Uses it high off the window. Yeah, nice no, play from Foreman. That. Kempton was closing in for his fourth block, but Foreman put that high up off the glass and got it to fall. Six point game, a big two minutes and 45 seconds left in this first step. Which way is this gonna go? Is BU gonna keep it in single digits or the Mountain Hawks gonna make a run and push it to double digits? Ross has screens to his right and left. He goes to his left now to Price. Down in the corner for Alston, nine to shoot. Price in the corner, the three, got it. What do you know, Austin Price, he was quiet through the first 15 and now two three-pointers for Price in two of the last three scores for the Mountain Hawks, lead to nine. 